how to find the best redfish spots anywhere in America in 30 minutes or less. Hey, everybody, Joe Simons. Hey, Luke Simons. Salt Strong Bros. So pumped that you are here. We are going to share some of our best tips on consistently catching redfish with nothing but little artificial lures in your neck of the woods in 30 minutes or less. Before we get into a couple case studies, let's talk about kind of the big problem and why we are all here. I believe ultimately we're here because we want more pictures like this guy over here on the left, holding awesome redfish, right? Catching big redfish, slot, upper slot redfish on nothing but an artificial lure and doing it on a consistent basis, right, Luke? I mean, that is the ultimate goal. We, we're here because we love fishing. We want to maximize our time and we want to be able to go out there with confidence and catch big redfish like that and load up our phone with a ton of awesome redfish picks, right? Absolutely. Yeah. It's uh it's it's rare now when we can fish for eight hours like we used to back in high school. Yeah. And so we want to be able to just maximize our time in the water. If we just have a two hour span, we can go out and confidently catch quality redfish like this without having to bother with live bait. Yes, you of course you can still use live bait, but we're gonna focus on finding the fish as quickly as possible. Yeah, but before we get into these case studies, let's talk about the problem. It can really be told in the story about the hunter and the hares. And this guy is going out to hunt walking out there and he's looking around he's got his he's got his shotgun ready and and all of a sudden he hears something coming in the woods behind him and he's kind of a little bit freaked out because something's coming like really really fast and he looks over behind his left shoulder and all of a sudden this rabbit this hare is flying by him as fast as he can and he's watching like almost in disbelief like before he can give his, his, his shotgun out and he's watching this rabbit fly by him and then runs into a tree right in front of him the rabbit hits the tree so hard, it breaks the rabbit's neck. The rabbit's out cold like this. And the hunter's just looking around like you probably would be like, what the heck happened? He walks up, the rabbit's dead as a doornail, and he takes it home without even having to fire a shot and feeds his family. Man, what a lucky day, right? But here's the problem. That hunter, on his very next trip, guess what he does? He goes back to that same tree, that same area where he just watched this rabbit kill himself on accident. And he waits for a rabbit to do the same thing again. And then nothing happens, of course. He does it the next trip, same thing. He keeps going back. And for years, this hunter, even though he still kind of knows in his head, he probably shouldn't do that because it was maybe it was just a freak incident. He keeps going back to the same tree as his first spot over and over and over again, just kind of hoping and praying that that rabbit might do the same thing again. And I tell you that story because that was Luke and I. That's like most anglers, honestly. We we have that really one good catch or that one epic day in that one spot. And guess what we do? We keep going back to that same spot over and over and over again, never really thinking about, hey, wh why did that rabbit do that? Maybe that was a freak incident. Maybe it will never happen again in 20 more years. And yet we keep going to these same spots, hoping and praying that the fish are going to show up again. But most of us don't take into consideration the trends and all the things that we're going to show you on this uh, webinar, right, Luke? I mean, that was us that we obviously weren't uh, hunting rabbits, but we were hunting redfish and trout and, and snook. And we had that same thing where... We'd sit there and scratch our heads at those same five spots, wondering why they didn't show up that day. Yeah, I remember like, Dennis Oss took us out one day and, and we caught a slam and he showed us a spot in the area that we fish a lot. It was near Boca Grande and uh, we were so happy. We're like, finally, we have a spot where we can catch a slam. And so like, we thought our problems were over. And so exactly what we just described, we just went back to that same spot every trip. Every time we went down to that area, we hit that spot and not once did we catch a slam there for like the next 30 visits. It, it was uh, it's all about choosing spots based on the conditions. That is the the missing link. And we just, it, it's less about spots, it's more about the conditions that make a certain spot good or not so good. Which is what we're gonna solve for you today. So it's all about being this guy holding the redfish and not about being the hunter and the hare. So here are the three case studies. One, we're going to talk about how to find endless amounts of redfish from the comfort of your home, using some, some cool technology. Uh, number two is the three things to look for on the water that kind of guarantee that redfish are going to be nearby. And then number three, how to use this one simple lure. We're going to show you our one lure that we always use to consistently catch keep a redfish, even in the heat of the day. First, let's talk about the 90-10 rule, because what we're going to talk about today 
uh, pretty much all of it ties into this whole 90-10 rule. And it's that 90% of all the feeding fish, regardless if it's redfish, trout, bass, whatever, they can be found in just 10% of any big area, big or small, in any given time. So in other words, if you want to think about it from a, a big picture, if you can just eliminate all the dead zones at 90%, all you're left with are the hot zones, like in here with these circles. Like we know that the redfish, if this is a hundred percent of an area, that the redfish are going to be in these five spots, which is around ten percent of this entire massive area here, Luke. Right? Yeah. Again, it's all about probabilities. It doesn't mean there's always going to be fish there. This is just where they're most likely going to be. And as I've said before, right? This is how you. You make sure that you put yourself in the right zone so you're not wasting your time and you're just maximizing every second of your trip. Nothing's worse than being in a dead zone because no matter, you can have the most expensive gear, the most expensive equipment, the fanciest lure, and you're not going to catch anything. Simple yep. as that. So the great news, although redfish move, they are quite predictable once you know the 90-10 secret. And these are two nice uh, redfish that Luke and I caught here recently using nothing but artificial lures. You can see that one little lure slam shady right there in his uh in his mouth yeah and we'll show some some footage on exactly how these redfish position in this exact area and it's like night and day once you see it it's hard to unsee it so you're going to really enjoy the drone footage coming up i love this quote we're about to get into case studies here so don't worry uh but this quote just solidifies all of it paul johnson he wrote the book called the scientific angler one of the top selling books of all time for uh, for anglers who really want to dive into fish biology and you could read it here it says in any given body of water in which i've dived because he was the diver that would go down and film all these fish, less than 10% of the underwater acreage has held 90% of all the game fish population. All too often, the fisherman has absolutely no clue that he cruised by some of the finest fishing areas he could imagine in his wildest dreams. I love that book, by the way. If you haven't read it, it's a, it's a must read. So let's get into case study number one, Luke, how to find endless amounts of redfish from the comfort of your home. All right, so we're gonna start with some cool drone footage. This is the this is the type of spot that redfish love to hold by. And what we have here, this is oysters. You can see some oysters, we can see some angrels, and we go ahead and start playing it. But what you'll see as we're going in is you can see a lot of mold, a lot of life. There's a nice redfish right there at the top. We have another red uh, down here hanging with some mullet. And as you'll see, as this 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 uh, camera pans around, is that the redfish are holding close to the structure. And in this case, very close to the oysters. Redfish love holding by oysters, number one. It holds a lot of food, right? A lot of shrimp and crabs and small bait fish live in and around oyster beds. Also, it's very protective of them. Now, check this, check this out. In this bottom corner, that is a bunch of redfish. Perfect spot. We have oysters. Wow, that's so cool. We have mangroves. And in a second here, you're going to see these reds come out from the shade. So during the hotter months, you know, redfish love to be able to get into some cooler water. And, uh, and what they'll do is, they'll, again, they'll, they'll find areas like this that have multiple forms of structure, that have life, and that also ideally have some shade. That's a nice redfish right there. These are big. These are jumbo mullet. And these redfish are just kind of hanging right in there with them. So our task, right, you can't always get drone footage of every area. But our task is to identify like this type of stuff. Here's where you can see those reds coming out of the out of the mangroves. Check that out. There's like there's like six or seven of them. Wow, pretty cool. This is what a 90-10 zone looks like. You have a bunch of redfish. Uh, plus, you have a bunch of mullet. Right there's just a lot of life. We saw a couple of birds fly through. And again, it, it, all it factors in here is is to be in the the right type of zone, right? But ideally, have some structure. Ideally, multiple forms. And then some bait, some life, and there's going to be redfish. It's as simple as that. So our goal now is to find spots like this from online maps. And so we'll show you how to do this from the convenience of your own home. All right, so now we have an online map. This is a satellite map. And so satellite maps are amazing. I started using these back when like MapQuest came out back in the 90s. And this significantly helped increase the, the, the speed of, of finding good spots. That way, you know, we can use these maps and zoom in. And, and start getting a, under, a good understanding of what type of structure are holding are in different areas without having to physically go there. And so as we zoom in, as you get a little bit more skilled, you can start identifying oysters, right? You can kind of zoom in. You can see this oddity on the shoreline, right? It's kind of oval and, and stands out a little bit. And we have pretty good idea that these are oysters. But with today's technology, this is, I mean, this is by far the biggest change and, and the biggest boost I've ever had. To finding spots is this is the system called smart fishing spots 
we actually put this together, right? This is all, this is 100% created by by inshore anglers who just love finding every shortcut possible. Is we have an oyster layer. We have a lot of cool layers. My favorite is the oyster layer because, as I mentioned before, redfish love oysters. Boom! So now, look at that. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. So now instead of having to like really get in there in the lowest level detail to find the oysters, now we just turn on the oyster layer and they boom, they automatically pop up. So now we can see that one that we're looking at plus these others. And, and as you kind of pan around, you'll see that there are a ton of oysters in the zone that I, I used to ne not think there were many oysters. I actually fished this area for many years before we had this technology. And I only knew about maybe 10% of these oysters. I didn't know that that these all these oysters even existed. And for areas like this, where the oysters are a little bit sporadic, when you find those oyster zones, that is, is almost always, at least I can't say it's almost always gonna be 90-10 zone, but that significantly increases the odds that it's gonna be one of those 90-10 zones like we looked at at the drone footage. So this simple layer, this is one of about uh, 10 layers in this platform. It has just been an absolute game changer for quickly finding those zones that are most likely to hold the most the most fish. So on top of oysters, it's important to know depth changes, right? Very important, is what, especially in the summer and, and winter and the, and the extremes, the fish like to be able to go shallower and deeper without having to travel much. The more they have to travel, the more likely they're going to be prone to dolphin and sharks, right, and, and predators. So, uh, and obviously for areas like this, this is in Tampa Bay, you can use these satellite maps to get a pretty good, pretty good gauge of what the depth is, right? This water is pretty clear, uh, but... If you're in areas that, that doesn't have clear water, this is a Jacksonville um, example. What you'll find is that it's hard to use online maps to really know exactly how deep it is. And that's, again, that's where another very important and helpful layer comes in, and that is the one foot contour, right? As far as satellite maps, this system does have multiple maps to choose from. But with this one foot contour, we can go from not really having any idea, you know, how this, uh, how the depth is to now knowing with actually really good accuracy uh, exactly how deep it is. And especially again, winter, summer, uh, these fish really like to hold and round docks, right? You have that shade, you have that deep structure as the water is either really cold or really hot, fish just naturally gravitate towards deeper water. They don't wanna be sitting out in the middle of a channel because they have no protection from Dawson, right? They wanna be near some sort of structure. And so what I do with this, with this, uh, this system, this layer, is I just simply go in and I look at docks and I just try, I find the, the docks that go out to the deepest water, knowing that the fish will naturally gravitate towards those zones. So, all right, so let's zoom in here and I'll show you just the, again, the quick and easy way to identify which docks are most likely gonna hold the most life. So I zoom in and each of these lines is a foot. And then as we get closer to shore, it gets down to a half of a foot. So you can again see with very good detail, and this dock, right, this is seven and a half, that's 7.5, that's 7.5 feet. This dock gets down to about seven and a half feet. This one gets down to about six and a half. This one gets down to almost 12, right? So we have a deeper dock and actually more shade, right? A much bigger dock. And this is just almost all going to guarantee that there's going to be more likely more fish here than the other ones, right? And without this one foot contour, we just simply would not have known, right? It'd be a total guessing game. You just simply cannot see the actual depths and this little trick has has saved me countless hours of having to go and actually fish the docks to learn the hard way and i mentioned before that you know the one foot contours you know aren't quite as helpful in in areas in like tampa bay but it still is especially again in the extremes where we can turn on the one foot contour and now when we can see the depth changes we at least know about how deep it is right so like in this one this channel only gets down to about three or four feet whereas this one gets down to about eight or nine feet. So we know that water in the summer, this water is gonna be cooler, right? It's gonna, it's gonna have more dissolved oxygen than, uh, than this little shallower zone that is not quite as deep and doesn't have quite as much water flow. So yep. again, even in areas with, with clear water, this, this one foot contour is certainly helpful. And, and as far as areas that don't have clear water, the one foot contour is an absolute game changer. So again, this newer technology has been just a huge save saver of time, and uh, and it, for those who know how to use it, of course, and uh, and this is again part of that smart fishing spots uh, overall platform. Yep. And earlier, Luke, you shared something that I want to make sure that we repeat because it's critical, and it's maximize the amount of structure, different types of structure you maximize the chances that you're going to be in that 90 10 zone that you're going to find redfish. And I think what a lot of people, they hear structure and think of docks, they think of oysters, 
But another type of structure is a depth change. We had Kent Hickman, who is, you know, won tons of money in tournaments and is now is the main director and the head guy for all the power pole redfish series. So he gets to fish with the best of the best in the world. And he's like, those are the two things I look for. I'm looking for oysters and that have shallow water that have a depth change nearby. And so yeah. he would, he uses, he personally uses smart fishing spots. He's an insider member. And so he uses things just like this to say, oh, cool. Look, look how tight those lines are. So the tighter the lines, the quicker it's dropping. You got oysters nearby, you got mangroves. So these are all types of structures. Like this would be an ideal spot to catch redfish, uh, all, just all from the comfort of your home. I mean, how cool is that without even having to get on the water? Yeah, so again, that 90-10, right, the fish hanging around this oyster bed has left distance to travel at the low tide when they have to push off. It gets too shallow. Now they can hold right on this edge. Right? This is a grassy edge going from two and a half feet down to about five and a half. At low tide, they'll be holding right here. And then at high tide, they just have to swim 30 feet, and they're back to that that comfort of their of their oysters and the mangroves. So all else being equal, right, this little zone is going to be a better 90-10 than say this bed right here, which has further distance. It's really as simple as that. It's just, a, it's all about putting the odds in our favor that we're gonna put ourselves in the areas that have the most fish. And this technology has just been a game changer for making that happen. Yeah, isn't that cool guys? And once again, this works everywhere. It works in Texas, it works all over Florida. We've had coaches and we've got 50,000 plus members who use this every time that they're going fishing. And let's move on to case study number two. All right, case study number two, the three things to look for on the water that almost guarantee redfish are nearby. So case study number one, we talked about how to find the good spots from the comfort of your home. Now, once you're out there, here's some things to look for to essentially guarantee that you're going to have a shot at catching some fish. So let's get into that with some more B-roll there, Lukey. All right, so we're going to go back to some cool drone footage. And as you can see here, this is just a nice looking grass flat, nice and healthy, but we don't see any fish, right? We're going pretty slow and we're not seeing much. There's at least a prop scar there. Um, it's uh, looking for anomalies like potholes. But here in a second, when we come close to this island, it's going to have what we call the ABC. Number one, ambush point, A for ambush. So we have some ambush points. Number two, B is for birds and bait. As you can see in those mangroves, you can see the birds and also uh, C is current flow. And so we do have some current flow coming on this on this um, this zone. And the fact that we have all these all these items, right, the ABC, we have the birds. And as you can start seeing here, we have a bunch of redfish holding right up here closer to the trees. So what they want, they want to be able to ambush their food and boom, check this out. Those are some really nice redfish holding in close proximity to the mangroves, right? That's really what they're significantly using to ambush their food. There's some oysters on the back side of this. We have redfish there, another one there, about five or six of them here, another one. And there's surely some more up under the shade that we can't see. Find the ABC and you're gonna significantly increase the odds that you're gonna get onto some feeding fish. For many right. years, we would have spent most of our time on, the, on that nice looking grass flat, thinking the fish would be out there, and they flat out weren't there, right? No matter what we would have thrown, we wouldn't have caught anything. And have we just gone to areas like this that have more forms of structure, that have the birds, that have the most life, this would have, of course, skyrocketed our catcher. You can see these fish look nice and happy, um, but most importantly, there's just a bunch of them down there. If you fish zones like this consistently, you're going to be catching fish consistently. It's as simple as that. Yeah, so let's recap that. So the ABC ambush, we're talking about structure, right? Uh, maximize the structure, maximize the the amount of opportunities you're probably going to get. And then what is uh, B, birds? Yeah, bees are for birds and bait, right? So the fact that birds are there means there's likely some bait fish, or if you just see bait fish directly, that's good as well. So yeah. birds and bait, that is the second one. Let's talk about one of our favorite birds, just seeing a white egret on the shoreline. And there is a difference be between just seeing a bird and seeing a bird that is in hunting or feeding mode, right? Obviously, if you see yeah. a bird that is, I mean, you, you can tell the difference, right? When one's just kind of chilling and versus one that is, you can see it's poised and it's going in like super stealth mode. That means there is absolutely 100% bait nearby. They don't just do that for the fun of it. Yeah, so any, any birds is good, right? That's cool to see birds. Like even right here, these, these are some birds that they're roosting, right? They're, they're up in the trees. They're not actively feeding. So this isn't the best sign of just seeing this type of bird. When you see an egret or really any bird for that matter, any wading bird that's actually in the water or right next to it with their head held up real high and not moving, 
that they're on honey mode there that that almost guarantees there's going to be a lot of food there these birds they have this view everywhere right so they can they're obviously not going to put themselves in the air without any life so those birds are extremely good about finding the airs with the most life and whether it's egrets even spoonbills um, pelicans as long as they're diving near uh, near some structure right they're going to be feeding on the exact same prey that the redfish are feeding on as well so when you find those birds that's basically nature letting us know like flagging the areas that are most likely going to have the most the most food and as long as that food is holding near structure like what we have here a bunch of structure if that food is holding near the structure and we have some current flow that automatically gives us the abc which significantly increases the odds that we'll be in the 90 10. Isn't that awesome, guys? Hopefully you're finding this as helpful as I did the first time I saw it. Let's move on to case study number three now. All right, case study number three. How to use this one simple lure to consistently catch keeper redfish even in the heat of day. Uh, Luke, let's uh, have you uh, go full on and I'll do a stop share here so we can see you. And I think the first thing that that I want to share is the power of one. And what I see so many people doing wrong, including what we did, is we bought all this different tackle and we try to like every third cast, try something new until it would work. And the best advice I ever received was instead of doing that is to focus on one lure and becoming an expert at it before you even try anything else. So that's what we want to focus on uh, right here. Yeah, and salt plastics are uh, was just the biggest aha moment that I ever had. I used to always use, again, I'd use everything. I like had a tackle store of lures. I just watched TV shows, read the magazines, and I got everything that they were recommending, thinking that my issue was lures, and it wasn't. I just wasn't in the 90-10 zone. It was really simple as that. It was all me. It wasn't my my lures. It wasn't the fact that I, I started buying like the 200 plus dollar reels. It wasn't that. It was I just wasn't in a good spot. And once I just focused on simplicity, in finding just a, a, a basic lure that flat out catches fish, this is really what I've what I've come to to just trust. Even even now that yeah, I do have I still test lures. Uh, part of my job is testing lures, so I still have a ridiculous amount. But when I'm going to explore new areas, I literally just put my trust in something simple like this. This is we call it the Slam Shady 2.0. It's a three and a half size uh, paddle tail, super easy, easy to rig. The coolest part about it is that it can be rigged weedless like, like this. This is what I use in those spots that we just looked at, where there's oysters, there's there's seagrass skipping up under mangroves, where we need to be tight to structure while being weedless. You can, you can see this hook point is just right up against the lure. It's very tough to get snagged, but when the fish strikes, it exposes the hook and has a really good hookup ratio. This is really responsible for most of my redfish catches throughout the seasons. Uh, but this same lure, right, if they're holding in deeper water, I can get this same lure, the same tail, and just rig it on a jig head. Now I'm able to get down to the three to six foot depths where I'm fishing like those docks. Skipping this up under docks is great. If the fish are, again, if it's really cold or really hot, those fish will be on the deepest oysters they can find or the deepest structure. And that's where the jig head rigging has the, has the most success. But the cool thing about this, it's just super easy. Anybody can do it. The tail does most of the work. As you move it, the tail just does a nice little flutter. And, uh, and attracts attention and flat out get strikes. So if you're gonna, if you wanna get good at lures, we always recommend starting with just one. And if you're gonna start at one, this would be the one to start with. It's just nice and small. It'll catch fish throughout the seasons. Yes, there's gonna be situations where others are better, but this can still get the job done in most situations and be an expert in one before you try to be good at a lot. That's uh, again, a lesson we learned the hard way after spending lots of money on equipment and changing lures every second, change your spots before you change your lure. In most cases, that's the best option. And then when you find that good spot, you know, practice your rigging, which we of course teach all that as far as exactly how to rig and exactly what to rig them with for each uh, each depth range. And, uh, and once you do that properly, you're gonna find that you're gonna be catching way more fish than ever before without bringing nearly as much tackle as you used to. All right, let's go through some of the other features, some of these other layers that are inside of this app, both on the app version and the desktop version. So Luke, let's pull that up real quick. All right, so we're going to go back to the original map we were looking at. Let me just zoom out so you can see what's happening here. So this layer section has our various layers. We can turn off one foot contour. But what we have here is we have multiple satellite views, which is awesome. And we talked about 
before uh, the smart spots. This is an exclusive layer we have where you have some, some AI in place here where the system will look at the actual day, right, the time of day, and it's based on this red line. So we can look at the tide chart, we can see what the tide's doing, what the weather's doing, and then we can move this line around and what the system will do based on this exact time, it looks at the weather, right? What's the what's the wind doing? It obviously knows what season we're in, uh, what the pressure is doing. Is it rising, staying steady, or going down? And based on that, that information, it'll start highlighting the zones that are most likely going to have some feeding fish. Red is the best, then yellow, and and down down and so forth. So again, this just takes some of the um, you know some of the onus off of you to to know exactly where the fish are going to be. And of course, it's not designed to be the one all be all, but this will just help make sure to guide you to focus on some areas that are most likely going to have some uh, some good uh, good action. Yeah, it's it's we created it with just the in mind of having the ultimate 9010 shortcut as a guide. Uh, I still personally I will look at them, but I like to use all these different layers. So look if we can pull up a few more layers, maybe even turn smart spots off and you know show the 4K satellite, show uh uh some of the the shade relief and the marine charts, all the other cool features we have on here. Yeah, so as far as the satellite, satellite maps are amazing, uh, but there are some issues. We'll just zoom in down to this down to this zone, so we can we can basically see there's really not much to be seen here. Obviously, we have the oysters. That's because we still have the oyster layer on. But just a just a traditional satellite map is good, but there's some cases it's just not going to be very clear data. Uh, but with this, we have multiple maps. We have normal, which is Google. Then we have Bing, so that now we have better right. But now we have this, we also have, it's called a high res. This is almost always the best, right? And that is a noticeable difference on wow. that high res to the other two. Now we can clearly see where these troughs are. Um, these get down to probably 10 feet of water. This bay is probably five or six. But with very good clarity, we can now see exactly what's happening down there on the bottom. Where if you're just using Google, right, you don't have nearly as much as much insight. Yeah, this is high, night and day. Like the this high day res looks like nighttime. Yeah, the high res is considered the 4K. So you click that on. I mean, it's wild. Like zoom in down that little uh that little um oyster island or that I get I assume there's some oysters up there, Luke. A little bit north. I mean, it is crazy the clarity uh that we uh, that we have on this. I mean, how how cool is this? It's like being yeah, here's seeing underneath the water. Yeah, so here you can actually see some oysters poking out, right? So you're getting some again crystal clear visibility. This has been a again a total game changer as well. Yeah, that would cost you thousands just to get that in and of itself nationwide like uh, like we have it. Uh, while we're talking about singing a water, let's look at the shaded relief, too. I know there's a, a channel nearby we can show kind of the power of this uh, shaded relief. Yeah, shaded relief is, an, is just a, a, another way to see the, the depth changes. And uh, and so this is very helpful. Again, you can see this is the, the shipping channel going through here. You can see some, some man-made channels going into the, into the backwaters. Um, so, again, this just helps you visually see. Like this. This is probably riprap where they dug the channel out and they dumped some limestone. Um, and so in some areas, we have another thing called the high res. So the high res shade relief, this is really, really cool. This isn't for everywhere, just so you know. But in some zones, you can start getting in and you can see high res data on exactly what's happening on the bottom. So you can see that like this is this is a 40 uh, over 40 feet of water, and you can see with clarity exactly you know, what the bottom's doing. You can see some rocks. They've even found some sunken boats and some ledges. Like here's, here's some sort of anomaly right there. We'll let it, let it render. But, uh, but yeah, so for some zones, oh, I went too far. For some zones, you can see this high res bottom. But again, this is just one of many different layers to, uh, to really focus on and, and, and test out. Yeah, we found some awesome snapper holes and grouper holes and hidden structure that we had passed over many times and had no idea it was there. It is so cool. Yeah, and then for the navigation, right, we have the marine chart. This is this obviously as, as you zoom in, you can see the exact depths. Um, so again, all the data basically, this is all designed for fishermen to help make sure that you can get find the good spots, you can get to them and back safely. And where you have all the weather data, right? Tides of weather all here was very nice, easy to read everything by hour. You have the the um it's supposed to be pretty rainy here today, as you can see, but we have the wind. We have the tide chart and this these columns in the background, those are the feeding scores. So it actually gives you the the time of day that is most likely gonna have the most uh you know the best bite. 
So again, it's all basically trying to make this this whole effort of catching a ton of fish as easy as possible for you. Yep. And Luke, if you could turn some of that off and let's show the public land too. That was another feature that uh, once again, most apps charge $100 just for the public land. And I found some really, really cool places to fish from shore. So this is really helpful if you're on vacation or if you're just a land-based angler in general. And in, in a second there, it'll a little highlight every area in really from Texas all the way up to Virginia that is public property, meaning government-owned, state-owned, city-owned, uh, parks. Uh, and some of these little properties are things that we've passed by before and had no idea that we could legally go out there and uh, and fish from them. Uh, so this mm -hmm. is incredibly helpful. If you click on them, you know, it'll tell you who owns it, if there's, you know, any restrictions, et cetera, if it's open access, how many acres, really, really, really cool stuff. And as I said, uh, there's apps that charge a hundred dollars a year just for this one layer in and of itself. Yeah. And same for launch spots as well. So if you're a kayaker or even if you like weight fishing, you know, these launch spots show publicly accessible areas where you can launch a kayak or even do some weight fishing. So again, really, really cool that I, you know, I was able to find some, I lived in Tampa area for many years and, and some have popped up that I never knew existed as well. So, and all the data is here for you to make your life as easy as possible. Yeah. We even had a guide up in the, in the panhandle in between Alabama and, uh, and Florida that found one that he lived there and guides there. And he's like, I had no idea I could legally fish uh, from this spot until he checked the app and same over in Texas. We've had some pretty hardcore anglers over there report back on all the different new spots that they found that they can do their uh, weight fishing for uh, for big trout so super super helpful yeah and as you'll see if we let it load and there's inland spots as well so that obviously we focus on saltwater fishing there is a lot of data for uh, for freshwater but again whether you're on the uh, any part of florida really anywhere in the southeast this uh this platform has everything locked and loaded for you all right, guys, I hope you found that helpful. This is just a taste of what we're doing every single week over in the Insider Club and just a taste of what the app can do. So next step is to go to saltshorn.com slash pricing. I'm on the page right here and pick the membership level that you would like to join. If you're already a member, of course, you don't need to do that. You just go in and you already have access to everything. We do have three levels. We heard from a lot of you saying, well, hey, some of you only want the app and the tackle discounts. Some want all the different courses. Some want you know, live coaching. Uh, we have it all. So regardless of where you are and regardless of what type of angler you are from wade fishing, shore fishing, kayak fishing, skiff fishing, you know, big bay boat fishing, uh, regardless of where you live, from Texas to Florida to Virginia, anywhere in between, we have a level for you. And we have members just like you in our community of now almost 60,000 members. So go here to saltshore.com slash pricing. You'll be able to get access. And right now when you sign up, we're giving uh, some free tackle gift cards that you can use immediately in our tackle store, where as a member, you're going to save 20% or more. Any questions or anything, hit us up. Thank you guys so much for all your support. Hope to see you inside the club.